Joining me now is Kurt Walton from NARI. Kurt, thanks for joining us on the show today. Good to be here, Jeff. So we're here at NAGDA. It's in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's another annual NAGDA. You have been a contributor, a longstanding contributor to NAGDA. Are you excited? I'm very excited. I, I've seen this uh, organization grow over the years in terms of membership and uh, projects that they've gotten involved in to improve public sector plans. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to be here. And of course, you know, your organization is very well known. You support the mission of NAGDA, but you're also supporting the mission of the defined benefit system, the public defined benefit system. So, I mean, there, there's so much going on in this industry right now with respect to DB and DC. So it's great to kind of be in this environment where we're all sharing information. And, and NAGDA, I think you would agree, is probably one of the best conferences in which to share that information. Absolutely. I mean, there is no other conference that really supports, I think, defined contribution plans in the public sector like NAGDA. Uh, it's unique in that sense. And also, you know, defined benefit plans as well. It's, it's uh, you know, that's a very important program. Those programs are very important to NAGDA members as well as defined contribution plans. Investment menus have grown, diversified. Part of that diversification is real estate investment trusts. And so, as an organization that is really supportive of that, but you've got to be very um, interested in, in that development, I would, I would assume. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, one of the things that we've seen, I mean, when I started out in this industry uh, 20 years ago, uh, it, you know, we looked at menus that were very small, you know, just a couple of investment options, maybe a stock option, a bond option, mm -hmm. some sort of uh, stable value type option. And over time, you saw this proliferation of choices that, that came out there, 20, 25 choices that were out there, and really kind of caused some problems there. People were paralyzed when they have that many choices. So, uh, but we're seeing over time the addition of asset classes to menus that are really important. And yes, we believe in, in real estate as being a fundamental asset class. And we've seen uh, a real increase in the use of real estate in defined contribution plans. And, and obviously, we feel that's very positive target date funds. We've seen further diversification within target date funds of real estate, of commodities. Can you talk a little bit about the experience that you've seen across maybe some clients that you've had? Sure. I think, you know, the first wave of target date funds, uh, you know, we some call it target date 1.0. Right. Uh, very simplistic asset allocation, stocks, bonds, and cash. Uh, and over time, we've seen, and since I joined NARI, which is about 10 years ago, We've seen a real increase in other types of asset classes that are being added to these types of programs. So becoming a version 2.0 type target date fund. And REITs have been a big part of that. Uh, we believe, as and the data would show, that uh, real estate is a fundamental asset class and REITs are a way to invest in that asset class. And, you know, about 10 years ago, you had a minority of plants, target date funds, I should say, that were invested in real estate. Now, 90 plus percent of target date funds have some sort of REIT exposure. You mentioned behavioral finance and behavioral economics and, and choice overload or paralysis by analysis, however you want to reframe it. Um, behavior, economics, important principles, but it's important to communicate to participants. So if you have a REIT, if you have any type of asset class, you've got to f a formulate a very successful and detailed communication strategy to roll this investment out, but other types of investments as well. I do agree with that, and I think, uh, but the target date fund structure is such a structure that uh, it's really kind of auto automatic pilot, where you know the investor doesn't even necessarily need to know the nuances of the particular investment. They just need to know, you know, maybe the investment attributes of that particular investment and, and what it brings to the table, and they can just invest in that and have the confidence that the professional asset allocator is going to do their job and they're going to have the money when they need it at retirement. So you're looking today at the, regulate, the regulatory environment from the perspective of your organization. You're looking at the money market rules as an example, the DOL fiduciary rules. Absolutely. I mean, I think, uh, you know, one of, the key, one of the key elements that came out is in regulations having to do with QDIAs, uh, so qualified default investment uh, option. Through those types of programs, you know, they kind of established an asset allocation vehicle such as target date funds, target risk funds, were vehicles that could be used with confidence by plan sponsors. And, and we feel that that was a very important development because we think uh, many investors really just want to set it and forget it. And they want to be in these types of vehicles. Uh, many, many individuals don't want to be educated. They just want to be in a target date fund or a target risk fund. And we feel those regulations really kind of added that, that level of confidence for employers to include those types of, those types of funds in their programs. 
switching gears a little bit, can you talk about, you know, we've, the theme of the day has been collaboration. And, you know, obviously you've been in the industry for quite some time. You've seen the growth of NAGDA. You're involved in other organizations. But I think you and your organization really believe in that collaborative spirit. How important it is to you and your organization for that sense of collaboration? I, I think this, uh, the collaboration is key. Uh, you know, it's, it's extremely important when you have uh, the industry side, so the investment managers, the consultants, all sitting on committees, but in NAGDA it really works well because you have plant sponsors that also sit on those committees. So you have the, the consultants and the managers that are really kind of pushing a new notion, target date funds, say, uh, for example, or auto escalation, uh, uh, auto features just mm -hmm. in general. And then you're working with the plant sponsors to recognize there's practical realities to implement these types of features into programs. So I think it's the marriage of those two groups, the government side and the industry side, are really important uh, to what NAGDA is all about and uh, coming up with a good outcome as far as, a, you know, say, a committee. That's great. Well, Kurt, thank you so much. I hope you have a great NAGDA and uh, look forward to, to speaking with you sometime in the future. Thanks very much, Jeff. Thanks.